Okay, we're here with Lee Murray, uh, Dacre Stoker here in sunny South Carolina. Lee, you are in New Zealand. Um, it looks like a beautiful sunny day there. Uh, it's, it's a great honor for me to be interviewing you as you are the multi-award winner, writer and editor of science fiction, fantasy and horror, Sir Julius Vogel, Australian Shadows, and a three-time Bram Stoker Award nominee. Lee's works also include the Tane McKenna military thrillers and supernatural crime noir series, The Path of Ra, co-written with Dan Raybarts, as well as several books for children. In 2020, Lee became a literary fellow of the New Zealand Society of Authors in their Waitangi Day Honours, as well as she is a Bram Stoker finalist in the category of Superior Achievement in, in Novel, published by Severed Press, and the novel is Into the Ashes. Unfortunately, we're not all meeting in Scarborough this year for the Stoker Con, so this is one of the reasons we're doing these interviews with the nominees, is to chat about you, Lee, and, and your, your story, um, and the backstories of Into the Ashes. But let's just start with, tell us a little bit about where you live and how this, this pandemic is affecting uh, your community. Hi, Dacra, and it's great to be here with you. Thank you for setting these interviews up. And I'm sorry we're not meeting in Whitby <laughs> and in Scarborough this, this year. Um, as you said, I'm down here, down under in New Zealand. I live over the hill from Hobbiton in the sunny Bay of Plenty. And it's um, late, late summer here, so it's lovely and sunny. Um, and as of last night at midnight, we knew the whole nation went into lockdown. So um, yeah, it's a it's a it's a big impact a national a national lockdown. My husband and I um, we've been in lockdown for or two weeks already because he had some international travel earlier in the month. So we're already ahead of the game. Um, but it's 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 a big it's a big deal. It's obviously you know a third of the world's population is in lockdown at the moment. So um, it's nothing new, but it is for us. And um, and I'm hoping New Zealanders will be compliant. Um, we've uh, put in a big stimulus package, and there's been a mortgage holiday for people with mortgages. I think for three to six months. So I'm hoping that th people will be able to come through this. Um, you know, without too much suffering and we can save some lives. So um, in terms of uh, how it's affecting us, I mean, for, you know, we we still have our um, trails and our walks and walkways and beaches open. Some of the narrower trails are closed, so people can't get out and necessarily walk on those. But mostly you can still go and walk around your neighbourhood, providing you keep, you know, a social distance. So that's going to help a great deal, I think, for New Zealanders who, who like to be outdoors. Is it difficult to get um, some of the, the normal goods you're accustomed to getting? I mean, over here, uh, there has been a big run on canned goods and toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there haven't been any toilet paper wars that I'm aware of. Um, uh, certainly, I always do my shopping online anyway, my supermarket shopping, and have done for about eight, nine years now. Um, I have not been able to get in a supermarket slot at all. Um, but one of my local, gro you know, local um, produce stores has been has has delivered, so I've been fine. I think it's a bit concerning for older people and um, and people who are vulnerable. But New Zealand has set up a system, a number of the stores where you can you can go in early if you're older or if you're vulnerable, um, and then they're letting people in at at a certain rates so that there's distancing. But I haven't been, so I can't tell you firsthand. I just know what I'm I'm hearing from my neighbours and um, friends around that. Yes, there's a bit of a there's a bit of a been a bit of a rush in the last couple of days because we closed down today, um, but um, in general, in general, I think people have been pretty civilized and and there hasn't been you know a great markup on the price of toilet paper, so I'm very relieved about that. What, what um, Lee? Tell me a little bit about you know on a, on a personal basis, you and your husband. You you share a, a home office. You're a creative soul, you're a writer. Um, what does self-isolation do to you and, and your writing process? I mean, how, how does how does that all work in a in a time like this of 
you know, distraction with what's going on in the world, but trying to focus on, on doing your normal thing. Yeah, um, on a day-to-day -day basis, it's it's not changed a great deal um, because my husband, he works in, um, well, he's a cloud architect in the medical field and his, his team is based in Baltimore. So in general, he's online in the mornings and, and talking to his team. And so, you know, he works opposite me. We have this kind of Victoria and Albert system. So where you can see me now, I'm sitting in his at his desk and my desk's on the other side of the room facing him. And he has a screen that's so big that I can't see him or maybe it's so he can't see me. I don't know. <laughs> um, and so if he does meetings, he usually does them with his headset. So I can't hear what's going on. And, and um, you know, sometimes they complain about my typing, my tapping, but in general, it works pretty well for us. So, um, so in terms of our work, you know, just the just just physically, it's not any different. We got a new coffee machine uh, a couple of weeks ago, so we're very pleased about that. <laughs> now that we're in isolation, um, and uh, in terms of the work, well, I mean, I'm not obviously going to writing meetings. I've I, my conventions are all down. I think I've had six cancellations of conventions and things that I would be normally going to. Um, but in terms of my day to day day-to-day -day writing, I'm writing less because I'm very distracted, but I've had so much extra work come in. My mentees are at home and I have six of them on the go at the moment. And so they're just, they're just sending me so much stuff. In my inbox is full of things from my mentees, which please, can you look at this? I've had some time and I've been able to write. So that's, that's, that's increased. And I've had four books come in for, for, front cover blurbs so lots of people have oh you know I've got some you've got some downtime could you read this for me now so I've had lots of great uh, great dark fiction come into my inbox so in a sense I've had less opportunity to write for myself and lots more sort of um, interaction with my horror writing colleagues who are now not in their day jobs and perhaps you know, getting a bit more time at home to 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 look at their own writing so for me as a sort of editor as well as a writer I found that my 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 creative my own personal creative time has been more focused on helping other people with their work rather than my own stuff so so some, something positive anyway coming out of all yeah, this yeah yeah I think so right. yeah well let's talk about into the ashes because you mentioned all these conventions you weren't able to go to and obviously we're all not meeting up at StokerCon in, in Scarborough but um so what does it mean to somebody who's got a book out, you're a nominee, you're a finalist for a Stoker Award, and you're unable to promote this book in the normal way? Um, obviously, you've got to figure out other ways to, to promote this work, because otherwise it, it really hurts. So what are you doing to, to sort of make up for all that and that lost time in front of your fans at conventions? Is, is, is there a good plan B that you're working on? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess like everybody else, we're going a bit online and doing some readings and that kind of thing. Um, generally in New Zealand, it's pretty hard to be visible globally anyway, because we're kind of stuck out here on the end of the world. So getting across over, you know, to conventions is kind of important to us. So yes, it's, it's going to be hard. Into the Ashes, um, it came out. It came out last year in February, so it's been out a whole year now, and and it's it's had reasonable momentum. So I'm not too concerned. The first book in the series, oh, there are three of them. See, I look, I'm doing the whole. But this first book in the series uh, just got picked up for German translation yesterday. So, you know, oh, hopefully that that'll. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, hopefully that'll that'll bring some more attention to this one. And um, I've written a novella that follows on from this book and in, in this in this series, they all stand alone. So they're all individual adventures. But um, I've written a novella that's coming out in a, in a collection. My first debut collection is coming out later this year. A little bit not sure when now that Worldcon's been uh, has been moved to virtual. But um, so it's it's. I guess we just have to adapt and change and see you know see what opportunities open up to us as a result of this pandemic. And I think, you know, the world is, you know, we've, we're, we're separated and isolated, but in a way we've come a lot closer. It's a sort of silver lining, a little bit different. You know, we have come a lot closer because we're all trying to reach out and connect because we're all so isolated. It's, right. a, sunny, it's, a, 
it's an odd phenomena, isn't it? No, you're, you're, you're right. I mean, Linda Addison said exactly the same thing in her interview. She said it's, it's forced her to connect with different forms of social media to, to her relatives, her, her son, other authors, um, when you, you normally would, well, you're going to see them in, in two months at this con or a month at this convention. So the effort wasn't there, which is now that we're, we are sort of isolated, you, you make the effort. And she said, it also shows that, like it or not, we're connected because people can get on airplanes and trains and boats and, and the viruses can travel around the world as well as our, our goodwill. So it's, uh, it's something we've got to deal with, isn't it? It is. It is true. It is true. I, what I think is really interesting is that, you know, it's amazing to me just how much we are consuming um, dark fiction at the moment. I mean, horror is just is the greatest opportunity to address our fears, and right now everybody is scared. And it is. It's amazing to me just how much people are on on Netflix watching watching dark fiction they are they're they're reading they're consuming so much and how important arts is the arts are to our well-being in times of crisis and it's really come home to me just how how vital that is and I hope I hope that economically that makes a difference going forward as well that people that we realize we need to protect our creative community and help them out because the gig economy is so precarious um but it to me it just it seems so everybody's home on the couch and they are reading books and watching movies and trying to find ways to entertain the children through reading and story and and i i just i really think that it brings it home just how important our community is well you're right and that's one of the reasons why our president john palisano of president of horror writers was really keen to do these interviews to to help you know keep our community connected during the time of isolation so let's try to wrap this up, but let's give you a couple more opportunities. How do we how do we follow you, Lee? How do we find your website? Where can we get your book? Um, and and you know that that sort of way, let further connecting than just this interview. So how do, how do people find out more about your your series of books and how can they actually purchase them? Oh, okay. So you know the the, the books are, the books are online. You can purchase them online from the usual places, and if you check Severed Press's website, you can you can find um, the books there, or you can look at my um, website. Please join and subscribe my website, please, people. <laughs> um, it's leemurray.info is the is the address for that. So. Thanks, uh, Dekra. That's kind of you for the shout out. I appreciate that. Well, that that's that's the point, and 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 super congratulations for being a finalist. Um, and and sorry we won't see see uh, all, we won't all be together in that room in Scarborough. But we understand the awards are going to be streamed. They're still going to go ahead. They're still going to have acceptance speeches by folks. So hopefully we'll cross our fingers for you. And thank you so much for taking your time to uh, to join us and keep our, our, our horror writers community connected and have a, have a wonderful day and, and a wonderful next few weeks. Thanks very much, Dekra. You stay safe. I'll do my best. You too. All right. Bye for now.